welcome to the Children's Museum of Cleveland. It's Miss Kelsey with another science experiment for you at home. Now today's science is all about heat energy. And that means we will be using a lighter or a match. So if you want to do this at home, you must ask an adult friend for permission and you must have an adult help you. But if you don't have those things, you can always just watch the experiments right now with me. So as I said, we're gonna be talking about a heat energy. You might have heard that you eat your food to make more energy for your body to work. And that's true. Your body works with some chemical energy and movement energy or kinetic energy. There's also types of energy like sound energy, light energy, and what we're talking about today, heat energy. Just to name a few. A few weeks ago, you might have seen a video where we talked about solids, liquids, and gases. Those are the three states of matter. And heat energy affects how solids, liquids, and gases work. In a solid, like an ice cube, the molecules are packed tightly together and not really moving. In a liquid, like water, the molecules are spread further apart and move around a bit. In a gas, like water vapor, the molecules are even further apart and moving more. And how you can think about this is that solid ice cube melted from heat energy and made liquid water. So the heat energy made these molecules speed up and turned the ice into water. So we're going to use heat energy today in our experiments to do the same things. We're going to take the states of matter and make these molecules go faster to create some reactions. Our first experiment today uses a tea bag and a lighter. That's all you're going to need. It's also best to do this experiment on a metal surface or a ceramic plate and also in an open area. So what you need to do is open your tea bag. If your tea bag has a string of some sort or a staple, just pull those out. You might need an adult friend to help with this part. And then either on the center of your metal area or the center of your plate, you're going to dump out your tea. And then you'll notice your tea bag is kind of a hollow tube. You can carefully place your fingers in the tube, kind of spread it out. Set it in the middle of that tea you just dumped out. And this might take a few seconds of adjusting as these tea bags want to fall over because they're so lightweight. So your adult friend will then take the lighter, and it's okay if your tea bag falls over, you could just fix it. Your adult friend will carefully light the tea bag, and in just a few moments we should see something happen. You might notice that the bag is flying right above me. So in this experiment, when I took out all the tea and made my bag, the inside of the bag is hollow or empty. But it's not actually empty, there's air in there. So the heat energy from the fire was warming up the air, making the molecules go faster and faster, which made the lightweight tea bag float up. You might have heard the expression, hot air rises, and that's exactly what's happening. So one more time, I'm gonna put my tube in the center of my tea. My adult friend is going to light it while I stand back safely. And again, it might take a second to get the tea bag up. And if it's being too wiggly, it might be because it's uneven and you can just kind of rip a little bit of it off. Make your hollow tube so that air in the middle can warm up and rise. Your adult friend can light it, and you can try the experiment again. And it's okay if the bag falls over, you can still see a reaction occur. In this instance, the air wasn't there, so the bag still warmed up, and this actually created a chemical reaction or a new substance. Would you like to see one more heat energy experiment? So once again, our next experiment is gonna use heat energy, so make sure that adult friend is still with you if you're trying this at home. Here I just have an ordinary birthday candle and I just have it propped in a funnel. You can always stick a birthday candle in a styrofoam cup to hold it up. If you have a bigger, just regular candle at home, that works fine too. You just need a controlled flame. So your adult friend will help you light it 
and your adult friend should do all of the steps of this next experiment while you safely stand by and watch. So for this experiment, I have a balloon that I already inflated. Now this balloon just has air in it. And we know from our last experiment, if we hold it over the fire, the molecules inside are gonna speed up, which actually makes the gas expand. But since the gas is trapped in this balloon, if it keeps expanding, you might have a guess what's gonna happen. So think about what happens if all this gas keeps expanding and the molecules are going faster. What might happen when I hold it up to this candle? And we're about to see if you're right. So your hypothesis might have been that the balloon is going to pop or explode. And you were right, because all those molecules were moving so fast and that gas was trapped and popped the balloon. I'm gonna relight the candle. I have one more balloon. Now this balloon is a little bit different because I added air, but also water. So before, we just had a gas, but now we have a liquid inside where the molecules are already a little closer together. That might change what happens when I hold to the flame. It might not change. So I want you to think about your guess what might happen to this balloon as I'm about to hold it up. So I can tell my water is about right here. I'm holding it to the flame. So last time it exploded right away, is anything happening? No, that's because the heat energy is heating the molecules in the liquid. So they're starting to change into a gas but the process is happening much slower. Now, if I held this balloon over the flame for an hour, maybe longer, all the water would eventually turn from a liquid into a gas, and then it would eventually pop again. But because we have a liquid right now, it's stopping the balloon from popping. So my friends at home, those are two quick experiments you can do with an adult friend's help and permission that are all about heat energy. From the Children's Museum of Cleveland, we hope to see you next time. For more programming like this, see cmcleveland.org.